Three weeks to the day since Madeline disappeared. How are you bearing up? Doing okay. Um, the first 48, 72 hours in particular were, as you can imagine, very difficult. Um, quite dark and it was quite difficult to function. Um, since that time, through people's help, we have got a lot stronger. We're very lucky in that we've got a fantastic family, really good friends, and even people that don't know us at all have been amazing. I mean, the support we've had has been overwhelming. And it's that really which has kept us strong and kept us positive and hopeful that we will see Madeline back again with us. In those first couple of days, you seem to be wasting away, really, in front of our eyes. And then there seemed to be a transformation and you seem to gather strength from somewhere. How did that happen? Again, as I say, I think the support that we had um, through people, through prayer, um, has made a huge difference. Um, and it's true to say that in the first two days, we didn't sleep much, we didn't eat much. But that was a few days, and certainly since then, things have picked up and we have been able to be stronger. We have, I, you know, those first two days were the darkest place, and what I've said before is that, you know, it was every parent's worst nightmare. Um, but even in the local community, as well as our immediate family and friends support that we had, we've had tremendous uh, messages of goodwill. And even that first Sunday when we went to church, the local community came up to us. Every single person in that church came up to us and said, you know, we'll get Madeline back and hope and strength and courage. And that certainly helped galvanise me and, you know, I'm not the most religious person in the world, but I took tremendous strength out of that. And I think it also has helped people around us because the effects of what happened uh, didn't just uh, devastate Kate and I, the, the effects have travelled and had you know, unbelievable effects on the people close to us and family and anyone who knows us. And everyone can feel a, a same sense of pain and anguish. But, you know, the, with the positive outlook and, you know, we certainly are maintaining that and that helps. It helps so much. And when you take control of even small things under your control, it takes away the feeling of helplessness that we certainly experienced in those early days. But you still don't seem to be any closer to finding Ma Madeleine. Well, the only thing that will truly make us feel good is Madeleine's return. You know, th there's no doubt about that but you know we set objectives and we try to achieve them and that helps us stay focused and I think what you have to remember are there is a huge amount of work going on in the background and we know that there's a absolutely huge amount of information coming through and leads are being followed you may not know the details and we don't know them but we know that there is a systematic approach to this but it must be frustrating for you not to see any progress. There's been a lot of criticism of the Portuguese police. You've always remained very supportive, no. which in some ways is quite surprising. I think. I think the only thing though that, you know, when you say there's a lack of progress, there isn't a lack of progress. There is information that are tracing uh, what the police call tracing, interviewing and eliminating going on all the time. We don't hear about it. And you don't want to know all the speculation and the details, but we know that work is taking place. But when you look back, do you think, in retrospect, more could or should have been done in those first few hours? Okay. <clears throat> I think, you know, there was a lot of criticism that came from the media about the police response, and that has never come from Kate and I at any point. One, um, the lessons that will be learned from this uh, investigation uh, will be learned after it's finished and not during it. We've got a very good ongoing investigation with excellent collaboration between the British and Portuguese police. And I'd like to emphasise at this point that it is really important that anyone who was here in the two weeks leading up to that abduction comes forward with any information, no matter how trivial, and if they have not been interviewed already. And I would ask to them to upload their pictures. I do have a web address that I'd like to re-emphasise, which is www.madeline.coupload.com. 
And if you haven't spoken to the police, there are two numbers, one from the UK, which is 0800 096 1233. And if you're calling from abroad, it's 0044 207 158 0197. And I mean, it ties in with our own family campaign to keep the publicity of Madeline's disappearance high. We truly believe that a member of the public holds the information to unlock where Madeline is being kept. They either will have seen something that will lead to the abductor being traced, or they will notice suspicious behaviour from someone. And we truly believe that. And I think, you know, we cannot have imagined how successful our campaign to keep the publicity going regarding her disappearance has been. But it's because people have seen that and with information technology, the world is so much smaller and we believe that there truly is a feeling here that the people will not allow this to happen and they want Madeline to be found and everyone is acting, some in big ways, every small piece of action here helps in the search. You're right, there has been the most extraordinary outpouring, <coughs> excuse me, there's been the most extraordinary outpouring of grief about, oh, excuse me, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I'll just get a glass of water. There has been the most extraordinary outpouring of grief, uh, certainly in the UK and I think worldwide about what's happened to Madeleine, but there has also been uh, enormous debate, as I'm sure you're aware, and everyone's been asking each other the question, would you have left them? And I'm a parent, I've got small children, and I've asked myself the same thing, and I, and I don't know. But there must, you must look back and think, we did the wrong thing. I mean, the restaurant where we were eating um, is on the complex where we're staying. And I think the, the diagrams that were maybe shown at the beginning of all this don't really portray how close it actually is. Um, we've said before, it was a little bit, we're thinking it's quite similar to on a summer's evening at home, eating in your garden while the children are in your bed. You know, it's that close. Um, you know... I, I think, you know, the messages of support um, and from the thousands of people who have said they would either do the same or have done the same have helped us. but it will not take away the feeling of guilt that we will have with us forever that at the moment Madeline was abducted we were not there and I've tried to rationalize it we do not think what we did was irresponsible but it won't take away that guilt but equally if we'd been in the adjacent bedroom and it happened I'm sure we'd have felt equally as guilty and of course that will not but you know what has happened is done and we are absolutely focused from the minute that we discovered her gone that we have done and will continue to do everything in our power to find her. What do you think happened to her? All I can say is that you know the information is that she's been abducted we don't know who, who's done it and it doesn't help speculation really doesn't help us we know that she's gone we do not believe that uh, she's dead I truly believe that she's alive and we will not give up looking for her until we've found her. And you've said you won't go home either, but at some point you may have to go home. At, one, at what point do you decide our lives must continue? We've got two other children, we have to get on. I mean at this, at this moment in time I cannot think about going home without Madeline. Uh, and we certainly have no plans at all to go home with Madeline, without Madeline. But what about the other two, just at some point? Yeah, I mean, Sean and Emily, they're, they're doing really well. Um, they're young, they're young enough, really, that this hasn't affected, affected them, which is, which is fortunate. What have you told them? Well, they, they do comment about Madeline. They say, Madeline's toy or Madeline's bag or, you know, and Emily did ask early on, where's Madeline gone? Um, but on the whole, they're too busy playing with the toys or running into kids' club. They're, I mean, they're really happy that the, the staff here have been fantastic with them. Um, in no way do I think at the minute that their development is in any way being hindered. We have 
obviously a huge amount of contact with them, probably even more than we would be if we were at home and working just now, certainly for me. So I see them, I've not been in any tr conferences or other than the one trip home. So, And the kids club they've got here, they're doing the similar activities to what they've been doing at nursery. Uh, they're developing and they're growing in front of our eyes, you know, that is, you've probably seen it and their speech, Amelie's in particular in the last few weeks has really come on and they're really turning in from toddlers uh, into a little boy and a little girl. So, you know, the fact that if we are staying here um, just now, I don't see how that influences it one little bit, the children. And in fact, they give us such tremendous strength and humour and, and, you know, in periods where you do have to forget why you're still here. But, you know, I'd just like to say it that you know, we are absolutely determined, and that's the overriding emotion, I think, at this time, having had gone through the grieving phase, phase, we are determined to find Madeline, and we will do anything to do that. And she deserves that. She does, completely. Tell me about Madeline. I know her picture. We all know her picture so well. And she's a gorgeous, little, smiling image but she is to us an image. To you, she's a real little girl. Tell us about Madeline. Oh, she's got bags of character, that's for sure. Um, she's very loving, caring. She's very funny, very chatty, very engaging. Um, she has her moments, like all children do. Um, I do think she's pretty special. What I like to say is that she looks like Kate, but she's got a McCann personality. And if you've seen the rest of my family... She's loud. Yeah, she's loud and she's a real extrovert and uh, for one so young, um, she can express herself so well and, you know, she tends to be the ringleader with the younger kids and, um, and during the holiday she was the oldest of the eight children here and, uh, and she just loved every minute of it. Every waking minute she was having a ball and that is certainly the image that I keep in my head. Jerry and Kate, we all hope so fervently that you find Madeline safe and well. Thank you very much indeed Thank for talking. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. Central Television, I, I forgot, just asked, could I ask a question about the support in Rothley, please, for Central Television? I'm sorry. <coughs> <Go on. coughs> well, it needs to tell BBC that, because for their regional programmes, you know, Okay. Okay. You have received such an enormous amount of support throughout the UK but astonishing the demonstrations of, of love and, and, and support in Rothley when you went back there last week. Yeah. Well Kate's aunt and uncle and cousin live in the village and we've only lived there for a year but uh, we've known the village very well for over 10 years for me and we've seen on the television the support we knew from conversations it was great but it was incredibly emotional going back to the monument outside the Royal Oak and uh, seeing the thousands and thousands of ribbons and toys and you know I did try to read as many of the messages and there was one in particular which I said to Kate when I came back from her one of her best friends at nursery uh, Arthur who has moved to Yorkshire and it was so touching um, but you know the support there has been fantastic and it does give us strength and hope and you know we know we're going to bring her back to Rothley.